You are watching Access LaPorte County Channel 97. Coming up next is the October 19th meeting of the Michigan City Board of Cemetery Trustees. You can find more information for this meeting at www.accesslaportcounty.org. Michigan City Board of Cemetery Trustees, this 19th day of October 2023. Roxanne, roll call, please. Yes, Virginia Keating. Here. Davis Bush. Yes. Bernadette Demke. Here. Marianne Nilsar. Marianne. Marianne Nilsar. Here. 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 Thank you. Uh, next item on the agenda is the approval of minutes of the uh, 14th day of September meeting. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. 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 You say aye. aye. I do. <laughs> okay. Aye. Aye. Uh, the next item on the agenda is the financial reports. We begin with Horizon Bank and see if uh, these reports that we received today Cut must have So go ahead, Aaron, please. Sure, by all means. Um, so to begin, the summary, uh, with reference to the permanent maintenance greenwood account, uh, the report shows that the account was down 1.8% for the month and is down 0.7% year to date. Which form should we, if we want to follow along, which? Well, these numbers are, they come from the individual um, statements that are provided with respect to each of the accounts. I'm just providing that's the That's what the problem okay. is. I want to return back to our uh, regular uh, reports. These are just not understandable for me, at least. It's, it's just too much, especially at a meeting that we really haven't had a chance to go over this. But go ahead. Um, we'll bear with you this time. Okay. So with regard to the permanent maintenance of Swan Lake account, the account is down 1.2% for the month, uh, but is up 0.2% year to date. With respect to the extension fund account, the account was down 1.1% for the month, but was up 0.5% year to date. Finally, with relation to the merchandise and commissions fund account, the account was down 0.1% for the month, but is up 2.7% year to date. With regard to the details of the individual accounts, beginning with the permanent maintenance screenwear account, uh, the money market uh, currently is yielding 5.2%, which is essentially unchanged from past months, uh, last month's yield of 5.2%. Mutual funds overall yield is 3.19, which is up from last month's yield of 3.05. The overall yield in the account is at 3.48%, which is up from last month's yield of 3.37%. Moving to the permanent maintenance of Swan Lake account, the mutual funds overall yield is at 3.29%, which is up from last month's yield of 3.15%. And the overall yield is at 3.56%, which is up from last month's yield of 3.49%. Focusing on the extension fund, the mutual fund's yield is at 3.32%, which is up from last month's yield of 3.19%. The overall yield in the account is 3.78%, which is up from last month's yield of 3.58%. And finally, with respect to the merchandise fund account, the mutual funds yield is at 3.30%, which is up from last month's yield of 3.17%. Uh, the overall yield in the account is at 4.88%, which is up from last month's yield of 4.84%. Um, and that is all that I have with respect to the um, report with respect to the individual accounts and I will turn things over to Brad for him to make comments with respect to the market situation. Thank you. Um, so you know the story of the economy continues to be um, inflation. You know, the inflation is still well over three percent. Um, the Fed really wants to see it closer to two percent. Um, so because of that 
you know, we expect the interest rates as far as the Fed, Fed funds interest rate to remain kind of at the levels that they are at least. Uh, there was some talk uh, a few weeks ago or maybe a couple months ago about one more Fed rate hike uh, this calendar year. Um, but with you know, the tragic events in the Middle East and just inst more instability that that, that brings, um, you know, the thought is that they may pause here and not, at least not raise in November. Um, there's two more Fed meetings between now and the end of the year, November 1st and December 13th. So you know, right now, it's almost a guarantee that they're not going to raise on November 1st. Um, but you know, that's December 13th, I think they're leaving that open you know, to see if, if you know, they may need to do maybe one more hike. But we are definitely, you know, I would say, at the end of the Fed rate hike cycle here. Um, the U.S. economy has proven pretty resilient uh, over the last year. Um, we've had a pretty a healthy consumer, uh, all things considered, um, and the labor market has still been solid. You know, the unemployment rates are still low. Um, you know, they talk about a soft landing as far as you know the, the Fed you know, getting the inflation to come down, but without kind of sending us into a recession, that's becoming more and more a possibility. Um, you know, and that's big, big part because of the labor market. The labor market's really been healthy. Um, you usually don't see a recession unless you have a really you know, poor labor market and a lot of people out of work. So we're not um, anywhere near that. Um, but the theme continues to be you know, higher for longer with the Fed interest rates. So whereas next year, maybe we've met, we met here a couple of months ago, may have expected a full interest or a full percentage point. Uh, cut next year. Now we're expecting maybe half a point cut, maybe not even a cut at all. So there, there could be, you know, maybe just a steady um, plateau here of interest rates with the Fed, um, kind of keeping things uh, the same for next year, uh, unless they start to see cracks in the economy and they start to see us heading towards a recession. They could then maybe start to cut rates. But um, right now the theme is maybe higher for longer as far as rates are concerned. Um, the as far as in, in the account, I think we talked about this last meeting, there are a few CDs that are maturing at the end of December. So um, next meeting, I'm going to bring a report uh, for you guys to look at. It's a nice visual. It's called the Maturity Ladder. It kind of shows you what you have as far as individual CDs um, and when they're all maturing. So it'll give you guys a better um, way to make a decision on what types of terms you want to look at for that maturing money. So um, I think that'll be a helpful tool. Um, and then I can kind of give you our thoughts on you know, what maturity you really can offer the clients with managed bodies. We just can't put specific recommendations, but we can at least give you some generalities of what you know, we're looking at as far as fixed income. So um, that's all I have. I mean, I'm going to kind of in and then see things. And like I said, that next meeting, I'll bring you back a, bring you back a nice visual report that you can kind of look at as a, as a group. And then the following meeting, we'll have to start trying to you know, decide what you want to do. At this point, I'm going to ask the board if they feel that they are significantly informed as to our financials with the reports we've been presented today, that they feel that they are able to vote on these and accept them. If not, then I think we're just going to have to postpone these, these readings, get the reports that we had normally, and do both at the next meeting. It's up to the board. Do you feel you're informed enough? Do you understand? The financials that you read to us today. I don't either. I, yeah, no. I, okay. yeah, I, I. Okay. Then I, I would ask for a motion to uh, postpone the approval of the financial request from Horizon Bank until for this period till next month. I so move. Okay. Second. I second. Okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries then. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is the internal financial reports. Just briefly, I'm going to uh, go over the uh, profit and loss report for the month. Thank you. Thank you. The uh, profits for the month of receipts for Greenwood were seventeen thousand five dollars and fifty cents, and the operating disbursements for the period for Greenwood were twenty-seven thousand four hundred three dollars and sixty-five cents, for a loss of ten thousand three hundred ninety-eight dollars and fifteen cents. 
Swan Lake, the operating receipts for $17,361.79, and the disbursements were $21,547.29 for a loss of $4,185.50. This is kind of unusual. We usually do better at Swan Lake than we do at Greenwood. Um, however, uh, do I have a motion to approve our internal reports? I'll we'll make that motion. A second. Or call for the order. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, the next item on the agenda is going to be the uh, reading of the superintendent's bills. Barthel Enterprises, $1,036.25. DNM, $345. Water and sewage, $238.38. Harris Precast for foundations, $1,754.40. Cable and Ace Hardware, $111.84. Matthews International for bronze and lettering, $6,120.52. Nipsco, $566.82. PSM, Pictures for a Memorial, $228. Republic Trash Haulers, $130.98. Tri-State Electric, the conduit for the signs, at Greenwood, $868.50. Michigan City Auto, $195.90. That was for a starter for one of our trucks. Coal Alliance, is gas and diesel, $1,658.71. Permanent maintenance receipts, Swan Lake, $1,002.15. Greenwood, $400 for a total of $1,402.15. Extension fund receipts, $4,203.50. Merchandise receipts, $3,801.50 for a total of $9,407.15. And those are the reading of the bills, Madam President. Thank you. I have a motion to pay the bills. So moved. I'll second it. I'm going to call for the vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Superintendent's report. Uh, it's going to be quick. Uh, I've been sitting in the office for the last two and a half weeks, plus I've had a week's vacation. There hasn't been a lot going on. We did have our fall cleanup at the Greenwood Cemetery this week. They are now over, so people can start decorating again. And we start Swan Lake cleanup on November 15 for one week. Uh, Ron Pittman and his helpers put up new aluminum poles at Greenwood. The poles were from the front of the old news dispatch by the police department or by the city hall. The poles look great and we put, we put them in at the GAR monument, World War II circle and the Veterans of All War circle. I want to send out a big thank you to Mr. Pittman and his crew for doing that. Also, the foreman and one of the workers up at Greenwood helped take out all the old pipe pole flight poles. So you get a chance to go in there, they've got, they're actually real aluminum flag poles with a nice ball on top. They look really nice. Uh, the broken piece of trim that I had been trying to get for the old mausoleum that you had said once, they couldn't do it either. But I have finally got a company that might be able to do it. They sent me pictures of it and everything, and if everything goes okay, we should have that piece of trim within the next three or four months. And if we do, it, it, unfortunately, it's going to be about $800 for the piece of trim. Shipping is another $400, so it's going to be about $1,200 for that one little piece of trim. And then I'm going to have to get a contractor to put it up. And let's see, we're still waiting on the granite foundations for the bronze memorials at Swan Lake. The granite company said possibly the 1st of December. If, if it does come in the 1st of December, as long as the weather holds, we will put in as many markers as we possibly can until the ground is frozen or until we have snow covering. 
Uh, Greenwood, they've been removing overgrown bushes and some small trees as the time permits. Uh, right now, though, we can't do any more. We're waiting on a part for the chainsaw. And let's see, and every two weeks, no, I'm sorry, about a month ago, every bronze marker at Swan Lake was trimmed around, string trimmed around, and that's been done now every year since I've been there. Took the gentleman to do it about four and a half days to get every marker string trimmed. So it's a little bit open now, it's easier to see your memorials. And that's basically all right now. Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, you will be sending a letter to Ron Pittman thanking him sure. on behalf of the board. Thank you very much. Um, next, uh, Dan, um, you want to slide in here if you wish. Move a little closer. I don't bite. We've all gotten copies of the report that Dan mm -hmm. passed out. Okay. Um, I talked to Dan, um, uh, I think it was yesterday. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, as I said before to the board, I think that we need, first of all, prior to these items be prioritized, we need costs for them. Okay. So if you could do that for us. Now, we had a brief discussion amongst us that some of the items that are on your assessment look like they really don't need to be done by this board. Okay. Is that true? Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you want to go over those with us at some point? Because today I don't think we have the time. But oh, we certainly. Like to have you go. I, I want to know what things are the most important things that we need to be done and what things we can put off. The other question that we um, mentioned when we talked earlier was you've got procedures that need to be written. In other words, a, an operating manual, okay? I know there are people that do that. I know that, don't know that we're qualified to do that, and so we need your guidance. Okay. okay. So I'm, gonna, I'm gonna turn it over to you and let you talk now. Okay. okay. <laughs> so perform the uh, health and safety uh, survey or assessment, hazard assessment on 9-21-2023 and Mark and Roxanne were just really a great help in the process of doing that. So they took about a little over two hours of their time. We looked at both um, all the cemetery properties and everything to uh, uh, see where we stand right now on our uh, safety and health programs. Um, you know, it has to be recognized that uh, uh, the department's done a good job in injury prevention because that's indicated by the lack of injuries that occur in the department. And so there's quite a bit of work that's getting done, but yet, uh, you know, uh, we uh, don't have some programs that are required uh, by OSHA, written programs. And so uh, I'd be very much interested in knowing uh, just different ways in which we can uh, get this accomplished uh, and, and minimize cost. And I would think that's the focus as to how we can minimize the cost. If we can find uh, someone who, uh, for example, I uh, just completed uh, fire extinguisher training with uh, the refuse department and training was provided largely by the fire department. And we actually uh, put out a pan fire uh, to give people experience, hands-on experience, on how to use a fire extinguisher in a fire situation. So that was at no cost there. That's an example. Michigan City Fire Department also provides first aid training, CPR training. So maybe we can uh, link up with other departments when they're providing that type of training and then possibly we can uh, get our employees in that training as well. That'd be excellent. Excellent. So those are some I, some thoughts I have on how we can minimize cost and and get all this accomplished. But there, one thing that uh, I have done, I've uh, taken the liberty of just marking uh, the priority one through nine, I believe it is, and the first item 
uh, that it sort of seems like we'll be starting from the back of everything and moving to the front. <laughs> and that we want to make sure that we have a good emergency action plan uh, to be able to handle foreseeable emergencies as defined by OSHA. And that covers everything from fire, medical emergencies, uh, even covers uh, workplace violence. We need to have a formal plan. We need to be able to then train our employees to that plan. And so that's very important. Along with that, making sure that our record keeping is uh, in good shape and incident reporting, uh, that may require a little bit of um, dialogue and discussion with, uh, with Roxanne and Mark on, on that. Um, I did mention that uh, I have one that's listed on page two that um, we're talking about uh, first aid CPR AED. Uh, I didn't see an AED uh, located at either of the facilities. I don't know that we have uh, defibrillators there or not. Uh, typically, uh, those are, you know, found in uh, facilities nowadays. At least one in each cemetery. That could be used by anyone who happens to be present at the cemetery. Uh, I think that would be something that, uh, you know, we we should move out on fairly soon, quickly. So, uh, looking at some of the other items through here personal protective equipment uh, that can wait uh, until uh, you know just before spring next year uh, make sure that uh, you know we're using safety glasses and hearing protection and all of that correctly uh, as we get into that season where we will be using that equipment more chainsaws and the like oh that's another example chainsaw uh, training uh, Purdue LTAP uh, provides chainsaw safety training at no cost. So typically we do that at, uh, uh, you know, here in, the, in our sanitary district and other places uh, within the city. So again, dovetail into this department, into that training, and make sure that we understand how to properly maintain and use a chainsaw. So, all right. Um, looking at uh, looking at the areas that we uh, need to move on first, uh, EAP and first aid. Um, I'll try and use materials that I've uh, used uh, elsewhere in the uh, in the uh, city here within uh, the refuse department and the sanitary district. And I'm probably looking at a, a couple days of uh, work on that. So that, that translates into about uh, $3,000 or something like that. Okay. First aid uh, CPR, I'm looking at uh, less than $1,600, maybe, to be less, 500 <laughs> Uh, purchasing the AED, I looked at uh, what's available at the AED Superstore, just to get an idea of where prices are nowadays, and the, a good unit runs about $1,500. We have uh, sent an example over to Mark and, and to uh, Roxanne about a new employee safety orientation. Whenever we have uh, temporary employees, summer employees coming on board, we need to make sure that they have an appropriate safety orientation. Uh, I would use the materials that I've already developed for the sanitary district and other places, and uh, I think the cost on that would be probably less than, probably about $300, less than $300 or something like that. So that's, uh, that's what I've looked at so far, looking at one, two, three. Other items can, uh, you know, go on into 2024. Okay. All right. Well, sourcing materials that we need now.
will. Uh, um, we don't go to Amazon to get these, right? Uh, the uh, AED Superstore. Um, I'll take a look and see uh, from other vendors if I can get a better price for really you know, a good unit. Um, and then I'll come back to, uh, to the board and, and suggest. But it'll be in the neighborhood of 14 to 1500, I think. Okay. And how many will we need? One, just two, one in each cemetery. And so I'll leave it to Mark and Roxanne uh, to determine the best place for something like that, best mm -hmm. location. And I can advise on that. But I have a question in your past experience, recent. Are there any federal monies available for this type of thing to us, or does that go through the city? Do we know, Virginia? You know, emergency response. I, I don't know what's out there. But I'd have to check, but I don't think so. I'm not aware of any. I'm not either. I'm not aware of anything. Yeah, there is a uh, purchasing policy that allows us to go into a pool with the state. The state gets the best prices, and then we can buy from those vendors that they recommend, and I will check on that. That's one place I'm going to check to see if I can get a, a better price for the AED. Yeah. So, yes. Um, any other questions or uh, suggestions? What what areas could we have other mentioned other departments or other entities that could uh, provide the service rather than you know, what I've listed here? Uh, Who's going to use the EADs? Who use them? That's available for anyone who's present at the cemetery. Okay, what you, we had, we went through this several years ago. I'm talking about yes, 15 years ago. Yes, sir. I went in, and the fire department came in, and we talked to all the employees, and not one of them would take the responsibility to do it because they just didn't want to have the responsibility. So what happens if we get the same thing now? Well, the AED, uh, let's take an example. It's... Uh, the ones that are located in the mall, same thing that we would have. They're extremely easy to use. Well, I, I and we all know that. that. But it just they just don't want to do it because they don't have any kind of repercussions if something were to go wrong. I know it's probably very small, but just mm -hmm. in case. And I know Indiana has a good Samaritan law. They do. But it's still it, it's still iffy with some of the employees. Well, hopefully someone would uh, step forward and provide aid to, to that individual. And that ties in, I believe, with the first aid and CPR training. Um, OSHA requires, because of the nature of the work that's performed at, in the cemetery department, that you have at least one individual trained on first aid in each cemetery. So you have to have then two employees who are trained on that. So that's a requirement. And so hopefully that individual uh, would be willing to also use uh, an AED. I would think so. Um, looking at first aid, CPR, and AED, what takes place in the training is that all those, all that's covered by the fire department. They show you how to use the AED in the first aid training. So it's it's a kind of a, a package, if you will, that uh, individuals uh, you know receive when they get the American Heart Association first aid training. So I've seen them available for general public use too. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, they're in places in, in an emergency yeah. room. Yes, yeah. Uh, they're in they're in churches. Uh, so and it must have made it easier to use mm -hmm. in, in the past 15 Once years. Once you open it up, it gives you a step-by-step -step, uh, process on how to use it, exactly where to put the pads, mm -hmm. exactly what to do step-by-step, -step, in a very calm voice. So I think once individuals realize the, you know, the ease of use, mm -hmm. that they're more receptive to using that piece of equipment. 
So well, I've been recently trained on AEDs again, <laughs> and they're audio and visual. Yes, they so are. So you do not need to know English. That's true. That's true. That's exactly right. You have no responsibility other than you start it up, you use it. There's no legal repercussions to you mm -hmm. if you don't apply it when it's available. Then there's legal repercussions. So, mm -hmm. as it's a 25% on one and 75% on the other, and it's still a personal choice on the person. That's true. So, with most everything. Yeah. That's even with the safety culture. It doesn't matter what your heart says. I mean, mm -hmm. if you. If you watch somebody die because you didn't act, you have to live with that. That's very tough to live to live with. Yes, very tough. I think they're educated on it, and they'll probably feel more comfortable. I'm, you know, they just they haven't had all this information yeah, about not right. having yeah. legal, you know, percussions. If something would go wrong, that they're, they're not liable, right? Is that what you said? The liability resists no matter what. It, an attorney can still do something to you. Okay. You still have to protect yourself. But it's the uh, social recognition of your responsibility mm -hmm. to protect somebody else. And I'm going to start crying because I've seen death. Yeah. But somebody ignored yeah. someone and they died. Uh -huh. And they have to live with it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so typically in the, the training sessions, uh, that the fire department provides. Uh, they'll cover first aid, they'll cover CPR, they'll actually work with the mannequins and we make sure that they make sure that the individual knows how to uh, properly use CPR. In addition to that, they show the individuals how to use the AED. And as you're saying, it's, it's pretty much, it's automatic. Yeah. It's step by step, mm -hmm. visual, audio. Uh, so, and it's, uh, I know it's saved an awful lot of lives. There's no age limit. And it may be a civilian. A 14 year old can operate it. Yeah. Yeah. And even a civilian, it doesn't, it wouldn't necessarily be uh, an employee of the, of the uh, department. It could be anyone that might be there uh, that could provide aid. It could be someone visiting or, you know, their mm -hmm. relative. Yeah. We're, not, we're not trying to uh, increase business by allowing someone to die when we have the ability to We need every So I, I know it is expensive, but it, it it's a piece of kit that has really saved a lot of lives. <laughs> Okay, let's start at the beginning, and that's funding. Brian said, have we got money in our budget between now and the end of the year, or do we have to wait till the beginning of next year? Well, we could take it out of extension. We don't have any line items that we can take out of the budget. Okay. I mean, it would have to be a separate, like the extension fund. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that goes for this year and next year? Yeah, well, well yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Probably should add something to our budget then in the, for the future for safety. Mm -hmm. okay. Would this be considered a capital improvement because that's what the extension fund was set up for? That's right, it is, yes. So this would be considered a capital improvement because of this? That, that's seriously. That's we need good. to talk to, I think we need to talk to Control mm -hmm. about it. Yeah, we don't want to make any rash moves. Mm -hmm with funding okay um and then once that's settled then i think that the, it's pretty obvious that you have to have equipment there to train on and so you have to have training and equipment taken care of well, I, I supply that yeah. i have my own equipment to do you training. do okay. okay yes all right so that's let us part of the cost. let us move ahead and talk to the controller's office first and then we may need a special meeting if everyone feels like they want to go more in depth into this report because it's going to take more time than we've got in the meeting. So let's just start with going to the uh, controller first and then make the decisions after that. Move slowly into this. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Copy of your thing. As I, as I promised uh, the first time I met with you all, uh, I didn't charge anything for this. So. Yeah, you need to you need to send us a bill for the time you. No, ma'am. Yeah. <laughs> My pleasure to do this. Can I take this? Mark wants to write down what numbers you have for. Could you put so numbers on? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> No, it's my pleasure to do that. Uh, well, we appreciate every minute that you spend. This is really important. It brings us into the 21st century, I think. This is uh, kind of an odd question, but I encountered it in training at my other part-time employee. But safety and health, would well, that include what to do in the case of an active shooter? Yes, ma'am. I think that would be covered somewhere. Yes. Just where you go and meet up and all that. That's covered in the emergency action plan. Okay. Mm-hmm. And we cover that. We cover other items, uh, suspicious packages, suspicious items, uh, bomb threat procedures. Those are the, the, the different procedures that OSHA likes to see, Department of Homeland Security, uh, what they like to see in a workplace. Mm-hmm. Okay, Dan, this is what I think that you ought to do for us. I think you ought to, first of all, map out the training and the cost it's going to be. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. And also tell us when uh, training is available. And that includes not just the health and safety, but also chainsaw. All right, so that we know in advance what we're doing. Um, and then once we get that and we talk to, we'll have to have that, of course, to talk mm-hmm. to the controller's office, then we'll move forward. Very good. Okay. Right. Sounds we, like a good we plan. Need your, we need your uh, billing, too. I don't want you to just say, well, I'm going to go out there and help these guys out. All right? Oh, you need to know what it's going to cost. It, it's best to have some sort of contract. So of course. We'll, we we'll do it develop a contract. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm an attorney. I don't <laughs> <laughs> do things on handshakes. <laughs> no, no, but the uh, contract's best. <laughs> that way okay, uh, uh, it's all laid out. There. Let's get the information from the controller's office, and then we'll contact everybody about a special meeting. Okay. And in the meantime, any questions, any concerns that anybody has, jot them down, bring them to the meeting. All right. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. My pleasure. Um, I don't have any new business, so does anybody else have anything? Motion to adjourn. Thank you. Second. All for the vote. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Aye.